Hey gang, this is Andy over at Falco Canine Academy with another episode of Falco Canine's Dog Talk. We're here with Kathy Johnson, Dr. Kathy Johnson, uh, the uh, Yorba Regional Animal Hospital. And we're going to talk, uh, this is going to be part two on our nutrition series. And we're going to get it straight from the, uh, from the vet on uh, what we need to know about pet nutrition. And um, uh, I don't know really where to start. But I mean, we've, we just got through talking that we both kind of... Um, have this battle against uh, obese dogs. Yes. Funny enough, I didn't tell you this, but uh, Spike TV called me and asked me to do an interview to be a host for a show called, it's similar to The Biggest Loser. Oh. Because apparently it is a big problem across the United States. It is. Uh, somehow I failed. I, I, maybe I didn't have a shaved head and enough <laughs> tattoos. <laughs> I'm not sure why I didn't get the part. Uh, but um, it is an issue uh, that, you know, we have a lot of obese dogs and a lot of dogs that have nutritional issues. Um, are there some common uh, ailments that you see in the hospital that dogs come to you and if, it if they would just change the nutrition that that would probably help these ailments or change some things? Well, certainly, um, obesity being one of them mm -hmm. um, because there's huge problems with obesity. There's not just the, uh, the physical part where you get musculoskeletal problems carrying mm -hmm. all that much weight around, but you get pancreatitis. Uh, is really common with high fat diets. What what happens with pancreatitis? What's pancreatitis is when the pancreas um, gets inflamed, which if people when people have it, it's very very painful. Mm. They start vomiting. They can have diarrhea and they quit eating and they're just lying around. They're very painful mm. uh, because the pancreas not only secretes insulin but it also secretes digestive enzymes. Okay. If it's not secreting them, it's not getting digested vomiting, uh, it's inflammatory process goes on there. So that's pancreatitis is something we see fairly commonly. Mm -hmm. um, mostly what we see uh, a lot of is diarrhea and vomiting from dietary indiscretions. Nutrition, if they would just feed a good quality diet, the same every day, same amount, and, and don't be feeding the, the steak, the <laughs> salmon that they had, oh, you know, he really needs to have a little dessert, a little ice cream after dinner. Those are the things that cause the vomiting and the diarrhea, which is probably 40% of what I see um, on a daily basis. Well, let's, let's talk to the people that, um, you know, they say, well, you know, dogs, when they are strays, they eat out of trash cans and all this, cause they tend to be the healthiest dogs and all that kind of stuff. I mean, the uh, dog's digestive system, can it adjust to horrible feeding? Um, or, uh, I mean, what, what's the important thing to know about it, that aspect? It can. Stray dogs, though, um, aren't, they still have the diarrhea and yeah. vomiting. People just don't see it. Yeah. Um, so they, they can eat all those things. And if necessary, they will, but it does cause issues. Okay. I mean, they, bones, we can give our dogs bones. Um, and 99 times you can give a dog bone and they chew it up and it goes through and no issues. But there's that one time when it's the perfect storm in the gut mm. and it causes little abrasions along. All right, let's talk about that when we talk about the okay. raw diet. Sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> I just didn't want to get too ahead of ourselves. Um, but uh, is there, um, should the, the breed of the dog uh, be taken into consideration when selecting a dog food? Or is it just one, just pick a food and feed it to all your dogs? It really, dogs, between breeds of dogs, there isn't different dietary requirements that I'm aware of. Now I know a lot of dog food companies have a special diet for bulldogs or they'll have a special diet for Pomeranians or small breed dogs. I think it has more to do with the size. There really isn't any different nutritional requirements unless it's a working dog. Um, then it does need more protein. So mm. there, there's different requirements within dogs but not breed requirements necessarily that I'm aware of. What about the type of kibble that you're using? Is there uh, dogs more prone to get gas by the way they eat? I know Labrador Retriever, they will, they, they will attempt to eat the entire bowl at one time. Yeah. Food. <laughs> Sometimes they're successful. <laughs> yeah, and there's other dogs who kind of nitpick and take it, you know, a little piece here and there, that kind of stuff. Is kibble important? Do you have any information on that? Kibble is just canned food without the water. <laughs> <laughs> That's just, it's just condensed down. Yeah. Less expensive, yeah. easier to feed, lasts longer, so you don't have the issues of going bad. Mm -hmm. um, is kibble really better than canned food? Mm -hmm. No, it's got the same nutrition mm -hmm. in it. So it, they, what happens though, is it takes a while for those little kibble bits to expand in the mm -hmm. stomach. So 
you give a dog a cup of food and it hasn't expanded, their stomach isn't full. And so they're looking at you like, did, did I do something? Do you not love me? <laughs> um, I'm starving here. Well, a half hour later or an hour later, it's going to expand in the stomach and they're going to be satisfied. Yeah. So, you know, kibble, it's the same I, I, either way. It's funny you should say that. I, we had a yellow lab um, named Montana who got into a 40 pound bag of dog food and I think fit about 35 pounds of that food in her gut. And she looked like an episode of uh, Willy Wonka. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Just, uh-huh. and her stomach was touching the ground, but her paws were up off the ground. <laughs> and it wasn't that funny because it caused we had to have the dog, you know, taken to the vet and surgery and you know, tearing of the uh, just abdomen. Just had to do that two weeks ago with my own dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Hmm, we won't talk about that. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So about the let's talk about the age and the size of the dog. You know, is uh, you know you got your puppy stage, you got your regular whatever stage mm-hmm. and then you got your elderly stage should yes. the food change absolutely okay yes. good um, puppies require they have different nutritional requirements mm-hmm. because their bones their body is developing they need the building blocks to build that body now if you're an after you've grown an adult unless you're a working dog where you're really using that much energy the energy requirements go down um, they should mm-hmm. as well as the fat yep. elderly dogs they again have different requirements because they can have ailments, kidney failure, you can slow that down significantly with different diets, liver diets. There's different things that you can do as they get older and start to break down that you can help solve with, or at least extend with diet. Okay, so I guess the most important thing is that if you're an attentive um, owner of a dog, is that you're really paying attention to what your dog looks like. And when you begin to lose sight of the, or or at least can't feel the ribs any longer, it's probably (laughs) a time to, you know, consider we need to change the diet and look at how much calories this dog and how much exercise the dog is giving. Yeah, really, really you should. We have a, excuse me, we have a um, program where we can measure the the size of the bones, the length of the bones at different places in the body. <clears throat> we put it in and you can have uh, it gives the ideal weight for what the dog should be and when the dog is grown and formed you really should do that you should find out what the ideal weight is um, because most people won't believe what it should be because <laughs> <Right. laughs> I have a lot of people will say well I can feel the ribs and and you can if you push hard enough um, you can yeah. <laughs> you can yeah. find the ribs <laughs> if I use my <clears throat> small little fingertips I can feel them yeah, I know I can there's something in there but you should be able to when you like easily run feel your them. hands yeah right and there are some breeds that you actually um, can see the ribs yes. and the people will look at a Malinois sometimes and go you're starving that dog and you right. know what you're so cruel to that dog no that's the Malinois that's the yeah, way it's, it's supposed like to a, look. a Vizsla or yeah. uh, you know any of those dogs that that's the way it's supposed to look yeah yeah okay we'll talk uh, some more about that a little bit later when we talk about what vets like not you yeah but okay. <laughs> all right uh the afco i just did a video on uh, part one of our nutrition episodes uh and we talked about the afco label and how that's kind of it's a guide uh that you don't necessarily you know go by whatever it says you feed four cups to a dog that's 50 pounds oh no um, is that something you would agree with or oh absolutely disagree? um that's a it's a guide it's yeah. meant to be suggestion. <laughs> um, it's, that's not. But it's he, not. That's not what they're told. I know people. Well, the Afco, the label on the bag says feed them five cups of food. You know, it it varies as as with people. Mm-hmm. You know, I can eat a lot more than my sister. Yeah. The same size. You talking about your sister? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You don't need to watch this system. Okay, good. Yeah. So <laughs> it's okay. She knows I talk about her. Okay, good. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it varies from dog to dog, and you really need to tailor it to that particular dog. Breed aside, um, the weight of the dog aside, you need to tailor it to that particular dog. What does that dog look like and need? Because you can say a German Shepherd needs, you know, three cups a day. There's such a variation with mm-hmm. the German Shepherds. You can't say that. You have to look at what that dog is consuming and what that dog needs. All right. Excellent. And uh, what about um, supplements? Uh, you know, you, you give the dog a, a pillar here, there for um, glucosamine or for vitamin B or amino acids, that kind of stuff. Is it necessarily pay the extra money for supplements uh, or is it better just to get a good quality dog food? Get a good quality dog food. Okay, next. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it depends. Now, if you have joint issues and you want to give glucosamine and yep. chondroitin, that's, that's not going to imbalance anything in the diet. 
but w when you start with a complete and balanced diet, the dog food companies and the companies that make you know, home cooked meals for mm -hmm. them s for sale, they go to a lot of trouble to complete and balance that diet. So everything is in there that that dog needs. Then when you throw other things in there, it imbalances some of the mm. nutritional requirements. And so just feed that. All right, very good. Now let's now we're going to talk about that raw diet that we talked about before, okay. uh, or the BARF diet is what it's called, the yep. acronym for the raw diet. It, how safe is that? I know that the, the, the most common thing is the issue of the raw chicken bones that can be found in a BARF diet sometimes. How safe is it just as a diet itself? And then talk about the, the well, bone issue. The, the, the BARF diet in itself is a great idea. And in the wild, yes, they do eat raw and it's probably better for them. But all of our raw diets go through our slaughterhouses. And our slaughterhouses are hugely contaminated with Campylobacter and Salmonella. It doesn't bother us because we cook our meat. But all slaughterhouses, and it's well known. I mean, mm. the, the USDA, they'll publish it, they know it, but they can't, you really can't do anything about it. So all the raw diets go through there. That's where they come from. So you've already got the issue of being contaminated Hmm. with salmonella, campylobacter, possibly other things. And then when you throw the chicken bones in, can you give a dog chicken bones? Yes, a lot of times you can. The one time you have a problem, you really have a problem. So you might get by with it for five years, but five years and one day later, you <laughs> might not get by with wow. it. And when you do have a problem, then it's really a problem because the bones can go through and as they're going through the GI tract, they will make little abrasions in the mucosa, which if there is other bacteria there, you can get a really serious problem in the GI. Okay, wow. Um, so it, it, in the wild, the reason that they eat food raw diet and it does well is because they go out and they kill it themselves, eat it, and there's no contamination. They don't oftentimes eat very many of the bones. Hmm. Uh, they might chew on them later, but most of the time they don't. Well, they chew on them op to open up to get to the, the yeah. marrow. And, and, the and it's soft. Right. The bones are, are pretty soft when it's a fresh kill. All right. So, so here's uh, uh, the tough question, and that's uh, my question about uh, what your, your thoughts on uh, my belief that veterinarians often like heavier and fatter dogs. Is this just a figment of my imagination or is it, because often I'll get these people and say, well, my vet says he's perfect. And I look at the dog and it's a sausage and yeah. it's not supposed to be a sausage. It's supposed right. to be a German shepherd. No, it's, uh, there's two problems with that. One, um, there's just as in a lot of physicians uh, are obese. <laughs> a lot of veterinarians are obese and it's hard for someone that's obese to say, your dog is obese, <laughs> you know, <laughs> control it. It's also hard for me, it's not a practice builder because it really makes a lot of people angry. It, they take it as a personal attack. Mm. Just like if I said, you know, you're fat, you're not fat, <laughs> you're, you're perfect. <laughs> wow, but, did you hear that but, wife? <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe one or two pounds, you know. <laughs> no, it's, um, they take it as a personal affront. Mm. And so it's difficult for us to go in and, and try and form a team and a rapport with this client by going in and saying, your dog is obese, because they take it personally. Mm. So a lot of times I think veterinarians sort of skirt around the issue instead of just coming out and saying, your dog is really obese, you're killing your dog. Mm. You know, that's not a practice builder to be honest. Yeah. And and a lot of veterinarians struggle with it themselves. Unfortunately, I think that's true. I, I think that one of the things that uh, helps me with my business is that the people at least know that I'm going to be honest with them. Right. Uh, when I, if I'm dealing with a police officer, uh, you know, a detection dog, I say, you know, <laughs> you just messed up your dog. Your dog could have been a lot better if you would have done this differently. And it's kind of the same thing. Yes. And it actually has, I think it builds a trust that I'm going to, you know, if they're paying me, yeah. to tell them the truth, I'm going to tell them the truth. And, and the, my clients, my regular clients, know that... Your two clients at you? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just oh, I have two now? 
second one. <laughs> no. If you've seen this hospital, you know that that's not true. There's a, a, a lot going on around here. There's lots of customers. Yeah. Um, they know that I'm going to be honest with them. Yep. Uh, for whatever it takes, I'm going to be honest with them. And they also know that when they come in, they oftentimes tell my tech, oh, I don't want to talk to Dr. Johnson because <laughs> she's going to be so mad at me. He hasn't lost weight, and I'm just going to get a lecture. And yeah. <laughs> but yeah. uh, they need, you know, you have yeah. to. That is the only thing that has been proven time and again. That's the only thing proven to extend the life of an animal is a lean, healthy weight. Awesome. And I tell them what you might not think about it now when the dog is three or four years old but when it's 10 and you're coming to me at the end of the life and you're looking at me with tears and saying isn't there something you can do mm. yeah there was right um so it, it is important yeah it's really important well the thing to remember and uh, hopefully you'll take away from this is that the important thing is that your dog doesn't get a choice it's kind of like a baby you know your dog the baby doesn't get a choice dogs get a choice if you're going to feed him mcdonald's every day of his life sorry mcdonald's <laughs> um and there's a movie out about this that you're just not going to thrive and so you got to be really considerate that this is the thing you're selecting for your dog take the time to find a really good diet uh, only consider the supplements if they're necessary and uh, make sure and keep the weight off. That's really important, both you and your dog. All right. Well, thank you very much, Kathleen. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. And uh, it turns out that we kind of know each other from some uh, similar uh, people that we've been hanging around with throughout our life. Pe yeah. People we probably shouldn't have been hanging out with, but it's cool. Yeah, it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> we weren't supposed to? <laughs> no. All right. That's enough. We're going to go back to talking. Take care. Talk to you guys later.